Yo, 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 what up? Parole Prison Show 92 back with another one. I'm going to do a real quick video before work about what happened uh, when I got out of prison. First days, first weeks, whatever. Long story short, they sent me the minimum to get released from the day of my release. I had woken up early morning like usual, 5 o'clock, you know, got ready, had my little box or two of property. I didn't have much because I gave it all away. That's, that's the rule. Let me put that cigarette away. All right, so yeah, that's one thing. Whatever you have, commissary food, you don't take that shit home, man. You give it out. Shorts, uptown shorts, uptown clothes. Uptown means street clothes, street shirts. Uh, You know, we say uptown. So anyway, I let all that shit go, man. Gave it to a couple good men I knew on the joint, you know, that looked out for me. I looked back out. Anyway, so... Just got my letters, uh, legal papers, things like that. I go to Brockbridge from the prison I was at. Um, I sit in the bullpen and I wait probably about eight hours or something. Finally get released. My mother and my son was outside waiting. I walk out to the parking lot. The uh, lieutenant of that jail let me out through the gate. She said, don't. I remember she said, don't please don't come back don't let me see your face again because i'm telling you now the system is set up for repeat it's set up to bring you right back i see so many people come back don't be one of them that's pretty much what she said summed up almost word for word so i remember that it always stuck in my head you know kind of worried me a little bit but i already know how the system goes so i get in the car Hug my mom, hug my son, super happy. They're, they're stoked, especially my son. He's really, really excited to see me. He didn't really want to talk much on the phone and stuff. When I was locked up, he just wanted me home, you know. He, he just wanted me. He didn't want that talk, that right. He wanted me there in person. And now finally here it is, I'm there. So anyway, we ride back home. It takes about two hours. When they released me, they gave me $50. They have to give you $50 in the state of Maryland, whether you got money on your books or not. If you got money, you'll get your money, and that's that. If you got more than 50, you don't get a 50. But if you got less than 50, they'll, they'll tally it up to 50, or if you got zero, they'll just give you a 50. So anyway, I had two 20s and a 10. Um, I bought food, of course, things like that on the way home, you know, whatever, just wasted the money. For, not wasted, but, you know, just blew it, whatever, have a good day. It's first day out. Um, and then uh, basically the following weeks, man, I didn't have nothing. I'm an ex-drug addict, junkie, heroin, cocaine, PCP, mainly addicted to heroin, but I was dibbling, dabbling every other day and whatever I get my hands on for real, you know. I've done a lot of stuff. Um, anyway, so I'm still fighting addiction. I've been clean for a few years now, of course. Uh, I didn't really use when I was in prison. I did use a minimum uh, while I was in there, though, for a few months. Uh, I used the boxing a couple times, very small pieces, but I did. I'm not going to lie about that. Wasn't strung out, really, though. Never had crazy debts that I didn't pay. Anyway, uh, I was making money more than I was taking it. So I did all right. But anyway, I, I still know what I was on the street before I left the street. You know, I, I was really bad off. So I got like a couple dollars to my name now. I, I'm on parole, on probation. I got to go up uh, to a different city than mine every other day to check in with them. It's about 20 minutes away. So I'm catching the STS bus, which is a local transportation public bus. You pay about a dollar each fare. And um I'm hitting up NA meetings. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do just to stay clean. I told my girlfriend today, um, I don't really go to NA now. I don't believe in a lot of things people do and say. Some of them are too many phony people, put it like that. And I like being around a very small circle. Everybody says that, but my shit's a triangle, like three people, man. My son, me, and my girl. I don't ride with too many because too many are fake. They tell on you. I do it solo. But anyway, um... <clears throat> So I got out of that eventually, but for the time being, I was doing it. Even if I ain't get shit out of it, it was better than sitting on the couch thinking all day, damn, this sucks, damn, I'm bored, damn this, damn that, fuck this. Like, how my life get here, because even though I went through prison, I came out with really nothing, and now I'm sober, so it's all hitting me. Reality smacked me in the face. So I did those things. Even if I had to walk, I would walk 30 minutes to a meeting and walk back. 
um, snow on the ground, whatever, cold as hell outside, but I was doing it, you know, not to get money from it, nothing, no, I wasn't walking out of there with my pockets full of anything, same as when I went in, but I was told to do these things, and I was ready and willing to put in the effort to listen and do them, um, I was working a lot, of, working out a lot before I got out of prison, so I was jogging every other day, you know, in the morning, if I didn't feel good or this and that, I was crappy, I was negative, I forced myself to throw that headband on, so that way to keep the earphones in my ear, put some shorts on, whatever, long sleeve, and go jogging, man, just jog for two hours, get my blood pumping, go take a shower when I get home, and start my day, so I stayed as positive as could, I didn't have no girlfriend, none of that, I got my son, you know, I don't talk to his mother ain't in years, and I have no interest in doing so, um, all my friends now are either dead, in prison himself or still strung out so I have no interest in speaking to them I cut ties with all of them and I just kept it real man it wasn't too exciting I didn't do much I didn't party all the time when I got out of prison about two months later I joined drug court I had to that's part of my probation if I wanted have I could have uh, I would have violated for sure and then I could have received from zero days to however many days 20 years is, if you break it down. Because, yeah, that was my backup time. And the state's attorney told me, if it, this doesn't work out, like we're cutting you a break with the sentence you got by suspending the 20 to 3, um, you do all three, you get out, you do probation, and part of your probation is a uh, drug court. And if you can't complete that, then we're giving you your backup time. It's that simple. And my backup time was three 10-year sentences. Two 10 years ran together, so that's just 10 because they're concurrent. And then you got an extra 10-year sentence from another uh, charge I pled guilty to that was ran con uh, consecutive, which was behind the first 10 years. So it would have been 20 years doing two 10-year sentences. Wouldn't have been good if I violated and still won't be. I got a year left on probation, and I got a, a month left of drug court. Thank God I'm finally going to graduate December 5th, as I told you all in the earlier videos. But anyway... My point is, man, I stayed strong, you know, I held on tight, started doing what drug court asked me. It was a lot. It was insane. I was doing UAs three, four times a week. I was uh, doing class three times a week, and I was expected to go to two NA meetings a night, and I was doing it. I was doing it all. Well, eventually, a few months down the road... I got a job because they were making me do community service every weekend if I didn't have a job. So eventually I got a little job, you know, stocking beer and liquor at a liquor store. Um, doing that at, at, it's called the Early Bird, little, you know, liquor store uh, cafe place. Little something, something, put money in my pocket. And I kept going to N.A. And uh, I seen this girl I was very, very interested in. She was very beautiful to me. Seemed like a really cool person, just like me. She had... A similar background I heard her speak in a meeting and I asked her for a number and uh, after that it was a wrap I called her she called me and eventually the next night she said hey you want to go to a meeting with me I'm like sure you know I'm gonna go anyway so she came picked me up and, and BAM our chemistry just clicked long story short we got together great she's got a, a daughter about my son's age and um, now we're still together I'm leaving her house now I actually headed to work you know it's been two years now. We're still together, still going very strong. I love that woman with all of my heart. Shout out Jessica for holding me down. I had a dollar in my pocket. She was driving. She had money a little bit, you know. And um, she still held me down, though. She chose me. So that, that tells me she's a real one. Damn sure ain't a gold digger because I didn't have shit to dig for. Unless she wanted some lint or whatever, you know what I'm saying, the clothes on my back. But at that point, I didn't have much, man. So, yeah, that's a real one. I love her, man. And um, things just started working out from there, you know. It really did. Now, I hit hard spots in my life still, and we'll talk about that another time. But I stayed strong through it all, and that's what matters, man. And um, real quick, the reason why I thought about this and made this video is because, like, my dad's going to be homeless in two days. Uh, he did six months in a jail in North Carolina. Instantly, when he got out, he caught the bus to Washington, D.C. Me and my brother went there, picked him up. He wasn't looking good, looking like he's trading his uh, trays, his lunch, dinner trays, breakfast trays for drugs in there, which I think he was doing. He lost uh, a substantial amount, substantial amount of weight and just wasn't looking good, man, looking unhealthy. So 
when he got back, he uh, my mom was nice enough to let him stay at her house. And they had been divorced. She don't really fuck with him, but she still did it out of the kindness of her heart till he could get on his feet. She let that man borrow like $2,000. My brother works at a boat yard. He got him a houseboat. Not the biggest one, but it's a nice one. You know, it's good enough. Better than the woods in a tent like he's done before. And um, so settled him up, man. And uh, he was on there for about a year and a half. But he kept drinking and drinking and not wanting to go to meetings. And I was willing to take him there. Even though I don't go anymore, I would still take him, pick him up. I would do anything, man. It's my father. You know, I'm a real dude. I believe in never giving up on family. Like, love them forever. I don't care what they do. So, I, I, I kept trying. My brother kept trying. He never paid my mom back a dime and then talks all this shit about her. And she's the reason they divorced and this and that. When really she held down the job our whole life and et cetera, et cetera. You know how that goes. I don't got to explain it. Anyway, he's still my dad. You know, I feel bad for him, but he's doing it to himself. I'm a man. I got my son, my girl, her kid. I got to take care of us first. That's my family now. Like, I've done all I can for him, and I can't help somebody that don't want to help themselves. But it just made me realize, like, damn, he came home, and they actually lended him money and helped him out more so than helping me out. You know, I had to do for my own a lot of times, and I had to pay for my own car and then sell my car and flip it and make 500 off of it extra so now i got that plus i save money from my job so i can get a nicer car and do this and do, you know i was flipping things working you know doing all types of things man doing side work too i was out there getting it y'all i really was and uh, i chose the right path and what i'm trying to tell y'all is it does not come fast success does not come overnight 98 percent of the time if not 99 so Wait on it. Be patient. If you guys are just getting home from prison or even nothing to do with crime, man, just life. Oh, I don't got a girlfriend. My life sucks. I'm going to kill myself. I feel you. I've been there, but I'm telling you now that's not where it's at. Your life sucks most likely because you are scared to get up and make a change, get up and fight for what's right, be strong and do what you know you should be doing. Not always what you want to be doing. I didn't want to walk to them meetings. I didn't want to go to them classes. I didn't want to work at a fucking liquor store stocking shit in the back, making minimum wage. But I did what I needed to do, not what I wanted to do. And it's all paying off every single day. It really is. Man, let me show you what I'm wearing on my feet, man. Just, you know what I'm saying? This is brand new shit that I'm wearing on my feet, probably a week old brand new and i'm not flexing i'm not showing off i'm not rich by any means but i'm just saying you know i, I went from having nothing like i told y'all the clothes on my back and a dollar in my pocket you know and that's that's real shit i was real live borrowing money like five dollars at a time from my mom that's it just five dollars not even a lot of money just to catch the bus to get the place i gotta be i was making it happen i don't care if i gotta run to catch the next bus or run to the place I'm doing what I got to do, man, and that's what it's all about. There is no excuses, and especially if you're dealing with parole, probation, they don't want to hear that shit because other people are doing it, so you can fucking get up and do it, man. I'm not trying to yell, be mean, be big, bad, nah. I just really care about people. I want to see everybody do right. Addiction really kills me. Trust me, it does. My best friend died on my last uh year of this prison term that I did. Last year, I found out, I read a, a newspaper article, and he had passed away from an overdose, man. Found dead in a shed by his stepdad, and Magus were eating his flesh, dude. He'd been in there for a while. It, it's, it's fucked up, you know. Rest in peace, Adam Lincoln. I think I told a story about him before uh, when I went up to Sheltonham with him, and I testified for him that I did it all, and I took the rap, because he really didn't even hit the dude anyway, and I'm not letting him go down for that shit, I might as well take the rap, and I did, man, I did, so anyway, that was my boy, that was like brother, you know, you know? like my brother, um, so anyway, he passed away, it's really hard, and it's from addiction, and um, there's others too, but that's just one of them that was very close to me, so addiction is very close to my heart, I fought it myself, and I can't even say I fully won yet because even though I'm winning right now at any point in time, it can get flipped upside down. So I'm remaining humble, but I'm also fighting every single day so I can remain strong and keep winning this fucking fight because I can't back down now. Never back down. Simple as that, man. 
So I'm up and at it. I want y'all to be up and at it, man. Get up every day. Force yourself to get a routine. Get the fuck to bed at night. Do not stay up all night. You have to get sleep. Sleep is very critical, believe it or not. And just get up and say, you know what? When I wake up, I'm going to do this, that, that, and the third. You might be bored, feel like you can't party, hang out with friends. But, dude, there's always something to do. Don't bullshit yourself or give me that bullshit. All that, all them fucking clothes have been sitting in your room for a week. All this bullshit you've been wanting to do. This roof you've been wanting to fix for your mom or whatever you say you're going to do, man. Come on, just get out and do it, dude. Just do it. Like, there's really nothing to it. It might not be comfortable, it might not make you happy at the time, but you getting out doing it will feel so good when you're done. Like, damn, I really had a um, productive day, you know, a successful day. I, I did good. I'm not just here sitting on earth for another day, not doing anything. So anyway, um, yeah, man, that's what the plan is. That's about all I got to say. I got to get to work. I love y'all. I thank y'all so much for the support. Any likes, comments, whatever, hit me up. Feel free. Don't be shy, man. I'm always going to reply to anything everybody says. Hold it down. Be real. Uh, Scope out who's real, who's not, you know, because I don't even listen to the bullshit, even if half is real and then some ain't and it's exaggeration. I got no time for that, man. I want realness. I'm still learning myself. And that way I can teach others that are, teach other people that are learning too, you know. So my ears are always open to realness, you know. That's why I watch West Watson. I watch Lockdown 23 and 1. Def ain't always talking about just jail this, prison that. He is talking about some real stuff, man. Some really good stuff you can learn from. So anyway, check them out too. Check out TK. He's pretty cool. And uh, Prison POV. And y'all probably know about Jake, man. Shout out to all them dudes. You know, I respect anybody, you know, trying to make a hustle, trying to do the right thing. They're not out here committing crimes that I know of. I can't say they are or aren't, but I know the shit they're doing on YouTube is very positive. So I love that, man. Love seeing it. Check out my new videos coming out. Stay tuned. I got them dropping. I just got to upload them. I do got a few in the vault. And this one I just made today. So, yeah, man, hit me up. Uh, if you're interested in doing a video too, maybe we can put something together and discuss, especially if you're from Maryland, man. I want to hear other people's perspective on Maryland prisons. If not, I got an idea. I'm just going to get a few dudes that I was actually in prison with to hop on with me, and we're going to make some collab videos. So stay tuned for that as well, man. Peace out. Love y'all. God bless. Have a good day. And remember, just get the fuck up and do it. Man, handle life. Remember, you are a man, so carry that shit like a man, like everybody's watching. Do not bitch out. Don't be a bitch. For real, man, don't. Call yourself a bitch if you are being one, and and see how long you keep doing that for. I bet you'll change your routine. Love y'all. Peace out, man. Prison, Prison Parole Show 92. Remember the name, baby.